Welcome to the How Did Show, where interesting people answer the questions, how did I get here? And how in the hell did I get here? With your host, Donovan Cornitz. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me for another amazing episode of the How Did Show. And man, we got a special one for you today. So this, this is a buddy of mine, and I'm so excited to have her on the show. And l- let me just get into it because she's very, very impressive. So here we go. Today's guest uses the power of her voice and a microphone to connect with listeners on her daily radio programs on, get this, Sirius XM, WBLS New York, and on the ABC Audio nationally syndicated program, The Deja Vu Show. She can also be heard and seen on TV as the announcer for Live with Kelly and Ryan. Along with all that, she also has a soon-to-be-launched podcast called The Hustle Hers Guide. Y'all, show some love for my homie. Deja vu. What's Yay! going on? <laughs> What's going on, Donovan? I am doing great. I'm so happy to have you on the show. This is just a thrill. Um, and you've just been so cool and supportive since we first met at a radio summit conference right out in Burbank yep um I think you were like promoing your deja vu show at the time exactly you have a good memory I remember that and uh Rick Party my buddy who's actually on he's got an episode too was out there and um yeah ever since then it's just been so dope having you as a as a friend so uh thank you so much I appreciate your support with everything you got going on No, thank you. And I've been bragging about you. I saw you posted something. I forgot what it was, but I was like, that's my friend. (laughs) (laughs) Your voice. I'm like, oh, you are, you're doing amazing things. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Well, look, we can gush over each other all day, but what we're going to do is get right down to this thing. Okay. So this is the how did show. So the first part of the how did show is you answering, how did I get here? So how did deja vu come to be? Well, back in the olden times. No, um, (laughs) I have been broadcasting and doing all that stuff since I was a little kid. So I was just talking to my mom today and she's like, yeah, you remember you used to walk around with that microphone in your purse and anytime something would happen, I pull out the microphone. Now, mind you, Donovan, the microphone was not attached to anything. No, it It was just me. It's it's, it's for the look. You don't light it. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. That's it, yeah. No, that's what I was doing. I've been doing that. I think I got my first um, recorder when I was eight years old. And then I just have been doing this forever. So in school, I started studying communications and broadcasting and, you know, working at the little grocery store. Register five is now open. No lines, no waiting. You know, that kind of deal. Trying to get my little voice out and all that. But I did the actually, same thing at Walmart. Right. There you go. <laughs> we need to clean up on aisle three. <laughs> there you go. But um. I started interning. That's how I initially got my foot in the door for real, for real. And shouts out to Mr. and Mrs. Matthews who let me intern at their mom and pop station. And that's what happened. That's how I did it pretty much. And then after the internship, I had a dream that I went and applied at the, you know, the big radio station in town. So that next day I went and did it, which happened to be MLK holiday. Okay. And as I was filling out my application, the program director, Mickey Johnson, hey, Mickey, Mickey. Um, walked through and he was like, who are you? I'm like, hi, I'm Deja, you know, just already ready. And so I didn't have a demo or whatever, but I now know as an air check, I didn't yeah, have that. Check. So I went back to the old station and um, where I was doing my internship, they helped me put it together, took it back. He called me that night when I was answering phones on my customer service job. I had called. This is how, how old school it is, Donovan. <laughs> called and checked my messages because, you know, we didn't do that back then. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. um, I checked the messages <laughs> and he had uh, left a message and asked me to come in and I did overnights. So, yeah, it's like that seems to be like the, the starting ground for a lot of people in radio. Right. They kind of test you out on overnights. They're not going to yeah. test you out in the morning or afternoon drive or whatever. They're going to test you out not. overnight. So where was this? Where was this? Hometown? In Jacksonville, Florida, a.k.a. Duval. Duval. There we go. Yes. Hey, shout out to WJXT, uh, which I'm the voice of. So are you serious? Yeah. Um, shout the out TV to TV station. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so there we He's go. He's everywhere, so, y'all. I told you. this guy. I got to tell my parents now. <laughs> Listen out for me. Um, no, that's awesome. All right. So. Like, obviously, sounds like from a very young age, right? From like eight years old, you had your microphone, you had this. So was 
radio and broadcasting ever not the focus? Was there ever like, you know, if this doesn't work out, I could probably do this? Or was there just like tunnel vision? I can remember being like about 12, junior high, and said that I wanted to be an oncologist because I heard the word. I thought it was great. You're helping people study about cancer and all of this. And but sometimes it takes your parents to break it down for you. Mama was we were driving along in our little car. Mama was like, um, Dash, <laughs> now where are your skills? Where are your strengths? Because she knew I was not about science, was not about math. Right. I was not about that. I was more like the English, more about literature and just my speaking. And she said, you should go where your talents are. So she kind of guided me through that part. But other than but even still, I was still broadcasting, even though I was thinking about the, you know, the oncology. But really, after she said that, it really kind of sunk in like, hey, I can be like Oprah or yeah, I can hey. be like Connie Chong. This is dating myself way back. I, remember. I can be like these people, Barbara Walters and stuff, because, you know, there weren't a lot of African-American women no. that I put up there to Oprah was the only one. So yeah. I had all these other women that I would say, OK, I could be like her. Right. And that's what I started aspiring to be. Your mom has to be like one of the first or only in history to steer their child away from being a doctor. Like, listen, <laughs> she knew her baby. She knew. She knew. She knew. <laughs> right. She remember um, dropping me off for the um the tutoring sessions that I had to have for my math class ahead yeah. of school. So my She's mom like, worked at I'm my high school. I'm not trying to do this uh through college. I can't right. afford all That's this tutoring. She was like, no, <laughs> she was not about to go through that. She already. Yeah. I, here's the story. She worked at the school that I went to for high school. Shouts out to Paxson Senior High, not to be confused with Paxson, uh, the smart people school now. No, we were there when it was just a regular basic school. (laughs) And she she had a friend, you know, one of the teachers. She's like, listen, my daughter's struggling a little bit through math. Can you help her out through this, this and that? And so I had to take classes, not classes, but a tutoring session prior to school starting because, you know, the teachers got there early. So, yeah, she was like, "Uh uh-uh, we're not doing this. We're not doing this. You know what? That's so funny because very similar with me, although I was like really into science and stuff. And but like I wanted to be a chiropractor. That was my first thing wow. that I wanted to do. And I mean, I was a biology major when I first went to school and I did like all of that stuff, had my uh, associate's degree in biology and I was all ready to go. And then I went, I transferred to NC State University, go pack. And I tried out the student radio station. And that was it. It was over. I went there just to check it out because people are like, oh, you got a good voice. You should do radio. I said, oh, what the hell? I'll try it. I like music. Right. And that was it. I was hooked and completely was like, eh, and switched my major to media communication. And my mom was not happy. So kudos <laughs> to your mom for being like, you know what? Maybe this isn't for you. My mom was like, what? Oh, no. Did I trigger something? My bad. Not a <laughs> oh, my gosh. Deja. You brought it up. But no, it was... um. It's just cool to, you know, kind of have that, you know, that background and you kind of knew early on, like there was just a spark there that never really went out. So good for you for sticking with it. Thank you. So with that being something that you were so focused on and like put so much energy in and obviously extremely good at, if you could think of a scenario where just your radio career or broadcasting didn't exist, what could you see Deja doing? I don't know. I I love community service kind of projects. So I think I would probably be doing something like that in the nonprofit sector or okay. maybe just teaching. OK, I don't know. And, and can motivational speaking still be in there, even though I'm not a broadcaster? Yeah, I, mean, I think I, 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 I would be doing something yeah. like that. OK, no, that, that all fits. And um, all right. Last quick question here. So obviously okay. with your radio background and career, you've had to interview tons of people right? Mm-hmm. Is there ever been a, a point in your career where you were starstruck? Um, several times what, when I what's met Oprah. Okay. What? I met Oprah. Now, I have not interviewed Oprah yet. What okay. I did was kind of bum rush her with my father. I saw her and I, I went for it. Right. And I was like, leaned on her <laughs> bosom, leaned back on her bosom. <laughs> nice. Oprah, Violated her personal space for the selfie. You know what? But Sometimes you got to go for it. She did it, Donovan. Sometimes you just got to go for it. And I and I, I saw her again, and then I kind of gassed out. And I said to myself, self, if you ever want Oprah to take you seriously when she sees you and when you see her, you can't be fanning out. Yeah, you can't all the be time. Out. Yeah. <laughs> I Oprah, had to realize time. that. <laughs> yes. But that time you you just kind of fangirled 
completely all over Listen, yourself. Listen, Oprah, are you kidding? <laughs> I get me? it. No, I I get it. I get Did it. My voice get hurt. Are you kidding me? You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, we'll have to adjust the audio for that. But yes, <laughs> no, I I understand. Like I think about growing up, and, or even not growing up as an adult. Like if I would have met like Michael Jackson or right. something like that. Like I don't think I would have been one of those people that just like. <sighs> just pass out but i definitely he walks been by like, and you pass out yeah just pass out like damn it i missed my chance to talk to him but i definitely think i might have been talking like this too for no reason just like oh exactly. my god exactly i guess yeah there's certain people especially i mean she was so important and impactful in like your motivation to become yes because at one point i wanted to go to chicago until i realized it's freezing in chicago yeah but yeah I'm like it's i want to go to chicago where oprah is maybe even just being there Right. Like yes. it'll, just, it'll just rub <laughs> off on you. Chicago's got something in the water. Although exactly. you are in New York now, which I'm a native New Yorker. So it's not. Mm, are you really? Yeah, I'm a native New Yorker. Born in Brooklyn. I don't think I knew that. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I lived there until I was 20. I uh born in Brooklyn, lived there until I was eight, and then moved to Newburgh, New York. Shout out Newburgh. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, I lived there until I was 20 years old. And then I moved to uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, man, I'm a native New Yorker. So, I mean, you didn't really avoid the cold 100%. But it's not Chicago cold. It's not Chicago. It's not Chicago cold, but it it is cold. I did fall down um, in the snow in Times Square. That's one of my New York moments. Like one of my first years there, I was trudging through. (laughs) (laughs) And just out. And you realize people are like, anyway and then just like walk right by (laughs) nobody's gonna help you nobody gave a flip-flop about me being on the ground okay nope no they don't care they got somewhere to be they got pizza or something i don't know but no i i I know that also that's the that's like the other side of being a new yorker like i'm sure they didn't help you at all like move it Mm -hmm. stupid but yes um awesome thank you so much that's a great uh just great story about how you just knew so early on because someone like me i didn't really find my calling until I was in my 20s, like early 20s. So for but wait you a minute, though, but known, when when did your voice drop? Because I'm sure as soon as it got to the Barry White level, people were telling you you had well, a great people voice. People told me, yeah. So people said like, oh, man, like working in a grocery store and like bagging <laughs> groceries and people say, oh, my goodness, how old are you? Like, you have such a deep voice. And I think I was like 16 at the time. But mm. what's funny is and I've told this story before, like I used to have a really high pitched voice and I was a late bloomer. So like my voice is pretty high pitched until each maybe like 13 or so and then I went from almost overnight from people thinking I was my sister when they called the house to them thinking <laughs> I was my dad like oh hi Mr. Cornitz like what wow no, this is this is Donovan like oh my gosh and so but even from that point no I was all about that I wanted that doctor life you know what I mean like I wanted to be a chiropractor and I knew that early on like I interned at chiropractor uh, offices and I learned how to develop x-rays and do examination like the whole thing I was oh, wow. a science nerd. Yes, for real. And then something just said, you're here at this university. They've got a student run radio station, which is very popular. Shout out to WKNC 88.1. Um, and so I said, what the hell? I went and I ended up co-hosting a hip hop show um, every Saturday night. And that was it. I had the bug, the microphone, all of it. Just Did any worked. of your teachers or professors say something to you, like, you know, really pushing you towards this? So they didn't. It was, I kind of pursued it. So once I changed my major, I started, you know, taking comm classes and I had a professor that talked about, like, just kind of, you know, randomly brought up that he did voiceover on the side. Um, And I was like, ooh, really? Like, what's that all about? And so I asked him about it. He's like, well, do you have a demo similar to you? And I was like, Mm -hmm. demo, demo, what is, (laughs) what is demo? And so he told me, and so that, like that night um, was at the apartment, like, with my computer, my little HP, or no, I had a compact Presario. Oh, yes! <laughs> I had the compact, and I had like my little BS microphone, which, you know, I still have my little like $60 microphone or something. And um, I put together a demo that was three minutes long, which was just three full 60 minute commercials, which is not what a demo is supposed to be, but I didn't know. And anyway, mm. he basically was the one that was like, this demo was horrible, <laughs> probably the worst I've ever heard. But it's not because you're bad. It's because you don't know what the hell you're doing. And so he was like the one that said, well, if you're serious, do this, get training, get coaching, learn the industry, research it. And so I kind of uh, attribute that to him of like really inspiring me to pursue it on a serious level and actually, you know, do more with more with it than just having like a deep voice, because 
a lot of guys have deep voices. Who cares? But if, what can you do with that voice? <laughs> I mean, you know, if I'm being real. So anyway, yes, it was a professor there at the school. So, you know, thanks to thanks to NC State for messing up having a doctor in my family. Sorry, mom. Mm-mm. But but it's paid it off, though. Out. Look, you're doing amazing things. It kind of worked out. And I've been helping my mom out. So I think she's pretty she's pretty happy now. She's OK with how everything turned out. Yeah, I think she's she's happy now. Yeah, it, it kind of worked out in everybody's favor. Let's just say good, that. Good. <laughs> but yes. All right. So now that we've got that out of the way, we're going to move into the next spot, which is the, the wheel, wheel of what? All right. Woo! Let's do Big this, money, guys. big money. Yeah, no whammies. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to spin this wheel and whatever it lands on, you got to answer honestly. All right. Okay. Let's do this. Do Hidden talent. Do Does Deja have a hidden talent? Do I have a hidden talent? Am I gonna have to spin I don't again? No. Let me see. Can you juggle? <laughs> can you ride? I cannot a juggle. Oh, I can your... twirl. I can twirl a baton. Bum, 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 Do you have a baton that you can, can show? Smile. That? That's not gonna work. I need an actual baton, Deja. That's not gonna cut it. Because look, <laughs> I can do that too. <laughs> You're a hater. You're a hater. Listen, the baton is actually. I still have the baton that I got from a garage sale, me and Granny, I was 10 years old. I still have it. It's in my closet upstairs. Oh my goodness, see? To this day. And I have like the little stuff that we twirled when I was in the band in high school and all that stuff too. Cause yes, I still love to twirl. All right, you know what? Even though I didn't get to see it, I mean, (laughs) it seemed like good technique, but just because I need some really good stuff, we're gonna spin again. You're going to be the first person to get two spins. I get double one, spins. Big money, spins. big money. Yes, you're getting two spins because. What if it lands right. on hidden talent again? Okay, no. now here we go. Food combo. All right. So this is any kind of weird food combination that you love, but other people would probably be like, Ugh, or like. They can't what? stand. Yeah. Like two um, things that you mix together. Like I'll give you an example. One for me is, and this is strictly because growing up, my mom had me eating it, was like peaches and cottage cheese. Like, I don't know why, but yeah. Cottage see? cheese, mom was torturing you. I don't know. I mean, but <laughs> growing up, I thought it was amazing. And so like to this day, I can get canned peaches, although I haven't had it actually in years, but mm. canned peaches and cottage cheese, and I will tear it up, judge someone else. It's delicious. <laughs> so what do you have that's something similar to that? A strange combo. Um, Let's see. I don't do peaches and cottage cheese, but I do peanut butter and apples. And that's not really strange, but no, it's just what I like. Strange. Peanut butter and apples, peanut butter and celery. We are a peanut butter family. My husband and I have a variety okay. of peanut butters in our cupboards at any time. A variety of peanut butters. Yes. How many the, different the, peanut um, butters? The, like, natural, yeah, like the natural. Wait a minute. Time honey out. Do you do crunchy peanut butter? The, huh? Do you do crunchy peanut butter? I, that's my favorite. Peter Pan crunchy peanut butter. And if I'm going to do creamy, I'll do Skippy. But yes, peanut butter, that's crunchy. And I can eat it out the container. We do that. That's what we do. But we actually mix it with stuff. I don't do too much mixing, but I do do the fruit. Okay. And the you know what? That's not weird. But I will say that it is strange to have a menagerie of peanut butters. I like, like it. Oh, menagerie. I'm going to start uh, describing it that way. Yes. <laughs> the glass a menagerie. cornucopia <laughs> of, of different varieties of peanut butter. So do you do any other nut butters like almond and cashew we have almond butter yes and i've made butter the almond butter as well so you know you get your little machine your blender crushing in and it's all creamy yes this is incredible i do all that stuff okay we are nut butter family so do cashew butter do you do like the natural where like the oil is separated at the top that's my husband he likes that i am not a a lot of work isn't it it is, and your hand, your hand gets tired. Yes, and I was Burning like one of the up. first times I was I was stirring it, and of course, like I was like, eh. and then my hand slipped, and it made the thing tips, so and then it was like the oil was all over the counter. It got on my shirt. It's just nasty. And I was like, you know what? I'm done. Yeah, I don't care if it's not as healthy. <laughs> Jiff it up, Skippy it up, Peter Pan it up, whatever. You can have this this oil separated business because I ain't got See? time for that. And oh, while we're talking about these nuts, um, the almond butter, (laughs) the almond butter, I made almond milk too. My own almond almond milk. milk. You made it yourself. Strain it. And this is before everybody got into this whole vegan thing. I was trying to, you know, walk 
testing it out. So you um, were hip to it before it was cool is what you're saying. Just a couple of years, just a couple of years. I, okay. I wasn't all the way back there, you know, but just a few years before everybody started doing it. So I was checking it out and it's a lot of work. It seems I don't like it because put... I don't know how do you how do you milk a nut like there's no there is <laughs> it's the stuff that comes out of it. I, I You soak them. It's a whole you process. Soak and like, chop. yeah, yeah. Ain't nobody got time for that. And then I realized that I really like just the regular almond or silk milk brand than the, the stuff that yeah, I was trying to do. Yeah, just pay for it. You know what? Just pay for that <laughs> convenience. You you got you got like five six different jobs you can afford. Right, to I just got tired of be milking you know almonds. <laughs> like you know, live with Kelly and Ryan. Don't they're like, hey, where is Deja? Oh, she's still making that damn milk. So now, <laughs> do what you got to do. Get in, get out, get it pre-made. I'm there with you. No, that's that's good. All right, we'll we'll let that slide because the 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 peanut butter angle. I'm 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 feeling that. So thank you. thank you so much for for bearing with two different <laughs> two spins of the wheel of what. All right. So <laughs> now that we got that out of the way, now we come to the second part of the How Did Show, and that is a story. Yeah, bum bum bum, where you had to look around and say, "How in the hell did I get here?" So what is your story? Okay, so when when you first asked this, I was like, oh my gosh, I have so many throwback old school stories that will stay forever hidden. Okay, I'm like, the how grave. the heck? What, what is that thing when Andre 3000 was like, where are my peonies? Where are my <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking about that kind of stuff. <laughs> okay, wow. I didn't know no, you were no, going to no, go no, that No, it wasn't like okay, that. Yeah, no, but no, you no. know some of the parties that you used to go to back in the olden days. But I don't at know any what you're rate. talking about. I was a saint, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, how did I get here? How did I get here? Like, I think my story is more inspirational than funny. I'll take it. I was doing my thing, living here in New York, you know, working for the company, yada, yada, yada. And then all of a sudden I got fired. So I had already gotten, you know, kind of complacent, thinking I was doing this, that, and the other. And, you know, I'm here now. I've made really it. So. I don't have to do anything else. And uh, life handed me some little salt. There was some salt yeah. right on my little strawberries and then sunshine, <laughs> okay? So with me getting fired, I had I was like, how did I get to this point in my life? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I thought to your point, remember saying that I had everything already planned out and it was going according to that plan. So I'm just like, and then, OK, yeah. I don't understand how y'all have all these issues. My stuff is going great. And then it happened. So when I got fired, it shifted something in me because, number one, I had to figure out what the heck I was going to do. Number two, I didn't really want to move from New York. So. I began to hustle and that kind of uh, began the movement in my mind and actually me fulfilling different things in my business and my career of really having my own. So a lot of yeah. people are talking about ownership now, but with the hustle mentality, it's all about your ownership. And I think I realized that once I got fired because that's their business, that's their radio yeah. station. They can run it however they want to because it's their business. Yeah. It, took me getting knocked off that little pedestal to realize that I have to have the business of deja vu and handle my business and get on out there. So now if something should happen, God forbid, knock, 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 we still got many multiple streams of income. We are still hustling and yes, we still I, will we not be found. Like she has many streams. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How did I get here? I, I'm not having that moment again. Mm -mm. No, and, I, I like that. But another thing I realized too, Donovan, <laughs> is that resilience the resilience right. that we have inside of ourselves. And I know I'm not the only one who's tapped into that in hard times, but to realize like, you know what? I'm going to be okay. Regardless. Yeah, I can do this. Yes. Even if all the material things go away and I have to go and stay back with mom and dad or whatever, guess what? I'm still going to be me at the core and yeah. we're still going to progress and prosper. So absolutely. And you still have your core talent, your abilities, your connections, and you know, my that twirling you're make skills, some, your twirling skills there. You got your nut butters and you can make it happen. We you can, can start selling it. custom nut butters. Um, <laughs> but no, that's that's definitely a great story. How long ago was that firing? That was 10 years ago. OK, that was 10 years ago. Actually, no, 11 years now. I this is what I did. I ran the marathon for that company that I was working for as the company representative. Okay. And then. A week later, they fired me. Week and a half later, they fired me. So when you say me. you ran the marathon, like you I did ran... two twenty six point two miles for this company. Boom, boom, wow. boom, boom, boom. As yeah, the, you hey, couldn't, you want couldn't you fire be me before I ran twenty six miles. Thank you. <laughs> no, but you know how radio is, and this is another thing too. 
as we are going through our lives, we are in different seasons, right? right. So that was that season. Yeah. And so now we're in another season of life. And I think if we look at things as seasonal, we know that seasons change, right? Seasons, seasons change. It'll come. Remember that song? Oh, snap. Um, Sing it. Sing it. <laughs> yes. But, you know, it's only for that time in your life in that yeah. period. So it was time for that season to change. And I don't know if I had not gotten fired, if I would have propelled myself to go further like I was doing because I had kind of gotten complacent and I was just coasting. Yep. yep. Hey, look, so you it know, shifted that's something a, in me. That's another parallel. Like I was, I actually had finally found a job that I loved, right? A nine to five job as a sound designer um, and like a dialogue editor for a video game studio in oh, North wow. Carolina. No, and I loved it. And I got to do my voiceover thing on the side because we had a booth there. Great people to work with, love the company. It's the first time that ever happened that I just loved everything about going to work, truly. And then one Friday, no direct deposit came through. <laughs> and then there was a company-wide meeting and the CEO came in crying and was like, yeah, sorry, uh, the investors pulled out and we got to go down to like 25 people. Um, so sorry, got to clean your, your stuff out by the end of today. It's like, what? And... Yeah, I was, you know, was married That's at the time. Crazy. My oldest son was six months old at the time. Everybody was on my insurance. So that was like a big, all right, dude, what you going to do? Mm -hmm. And I just took the, the side gig that I've been doing for about five years at that point. And I said, you know what? Maybe this is my sign. I, you know, I tried to get other jobs similar, but I, I had only been doing it like a year and change. I didn't have enough experience to like outrank mm -hmm. other people that had been doing it longer. So um, I said, you know what, I'm gonna try and make this VO thing work. And I haven't looked back since and I've hustled and grind into, you know, different businesses and other streams of income since then. But yeah, it was that firing and that desperation and like survival kicked in like you got a son, yes. like you got some responsibilities here, bro. Um, so yeah. Same, same, same. We vibing right now. Dude. That's I, it. That's oh, sort of connection. So that connection. I know that you said like, Dave, so what is like your actual, is your actual name? Deja. It's Deja, but I spell it differently for the oh, government, okay. of course. I got you. And we, I we added the voo for spice. Okay. I was going to say, where'd the voo come in? But I got you now. Now that it's deja vu. All right. Now we're, yes. now we're good. All right. Cool. Yes. So yes. Um, thank you so much. Deja. No, thank you. This is fun. For, Normally for I'm doing the here. one interviewing. As a yes. matter of fact, I still have so many questions. I want to ask you about your career. You know what? We're going to do an episode where I get interviewed. I've been, it's been requested a bunch. So I, I have to see who's going to interview me or if I yes, just Yes, and I at least want to get you on my podcast too whenever I can launch Let's it off. do it. I've been so, talking about it forever and it's just, okay. You, yeah. you got to make, well, you, you're you kind of busy. A <laughs> little bit busy on TV, okay. on radio. Um, but and so we're really not stopping quick, there. Look, we're about to take and, over, okay? You know what? I just want to be along for the ride if that's cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, By all but means. look, let the people know where they can find you, how they can listen to you, hear you, social media, all of that good stuff, and what you got going on with Hustle Her. You can hit me at Deja Vu Speaks on all social. And I'm normally on Instagram and on Facebook. Yes, I still do Facebook. The oh, OG. You know what? It is what it is. <laughs> Get but off I, my I lawn. Think I'm going to start. I'm going to start doing TikTok. I think I am TikTok and stuff because I'm always on TikTok surfing and stuff, but never posting. Yeah. But it's really inter it's interesting. It's, it's different other from world. this other platform. It's a whole other world. Yes, it is. <laughs> but um, find me at Deja Vu Speaks. You can ask for the Deja Vu show in your city. We'll be coming to a station near you and also be looking out for me. Woo -woo! Even on your digital as well as your small screens. So. That's what we got for the future. And when are and you on Sirius XM? When can people hear you on Sirius XM? I am on the hotness, the weekend countdown with Dion Deasy. And then I have my show on Saturdays. You can check that out from 10 to one as well. Check that out. Look at that. Like we don't even have, have, we don't have time for all the stuff. She's like forgetting other stuff that she's like, oh yeah, I forgot I'm on <laughs> satellite radio. My bad. Two shows. Oh, and then live with Kelly and Ryan in the morning. Yes. Let's, let's get that as well. By the way, that is so dope that they brought you into the whole fold and you got to do like the Halloween thing and the costumes. How, Yo, how that, fun was that? This whole thing has been a blessing and it's been a year already. And I'm like, what? A year? Wow. Yes. You know so what? I, because I was applause. behind the scenes Congrats. doing the voiceover stuff before they started putting me on camera. Yeah. So next week will actually be a, a year. 
And um, it's just been a blast. Awesome. And I just, I'm so grateful. Again, like I said before, these are seasons. So this is a season in my life where we're going to ride this thing on out. But I don't know what happens in the future, but I'm enjoying yeah. the ride right now. That's what it's about, people. Enjoy the ride. You know, yep. people sometimes get so focused on what, like, what they could do or what could happen. You lose sight of like enjoying what you're doing now, making the most of what you're doing now. Mm -hmm. And shout out to you for going through all of that with so much uh, joy and energy and smiles and just excitement for everything that you do with your lives and with Red Alert and all of those things. Um, <laughs> it's just a testament to your personality and what it brings to the world of media and entertainment. So keep doing your thing, Deja. Keep getting bigger and bigger. And again, um, just thank you so much for being on my show. No, thank you. All right. So we will talk later. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Peace. What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for joining me and having some fun as we interview some really, really interesting people. So go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, and be on the lookout for more episodes of The How Did Show.